Halloween is here, and what better way to celebrate than combining Yu-Gi-Oh! and pumpkin carving to summon the ultimate Halloween monster, Pumpkin, the King of Ghosts. I start this project off with a carvable foam pumpkin. Using the trading card as a reference image, I transfer the design onto the face of the pumpkin. These pumpkins are notoriously hard to carve with standard carving tools. So to get the cleanest cut possible, I'm using a wood burner with a hot knife attachment. I'm using very little pressure and letting the heat from the knife do most of the work. This is my first time using one of these and it was actually pretty fun. With the design cut out, I can pop out all the pieces. Using a 16th inch drill bit, I drill holes for the wires that will support the tentacles. Speaking of support wire, I'll be using 16 gauge steel wire. I start by measuring out to 10 inches and cutting it to length using wire cutters. I then add a 90 degree bend to the tips of all the wires, which helps lock them into place. I add a bit of super glue and then insert the wires. After letting the superglue set up for a few minutes, I could then bend the wires to give this guy a dynamic pose. After bending all the wires, I couldn't help but notice that our pumpkin boy was skipping tentacle day at the gym. So to help bulk him up, I'll be using Magic Sculpt, which is a two-part epoxy clay. I start by scooping out equal sized balls of resin and hardener. I then roll the balls into clay sausages and then mix together thoroughly. I keep mixing the clay until a uniform color is achieved. Once the clay is mixed, I set it on some parchment paper and cut it into equal sized pieces. At this point, they look more like Tostitos pizza rolls than they do tentacles. To turn this forbidden snack into something that looks more like tentacles, I start by rolling it out between two pieces of cardboard. Using the cardboard gives me a way more consistent thickness than if I were to roll it out by hand. With the clay rolled out, I can press it onto the support wire to start bulking up the tentacles. I found that it was easier to first split the clay down the middle and then pinch it along the wire once it was in place. Once all the clay was attached, I used a silicone shaper to close up any seam lines and to smooth out the tentacles. Using some more clay, I filled in any gaps and smoothed out the transition area. With the tentacles smoothed out, they were looking a bit too smooth. To fix this, I whipped up a quick texture roller and got to work applying it to all the tentacles. The texture roller makes it so easy to add a ton of character and really bring this pumpkin to life. With the tentacles textured, I could start working on the eye, and for that I'm using a hardened ball of clay. Using a file, I grind the backside of the eye flat. Using a bit of hot glue, I attach the eye to the pumpkin. Because the back of the eye is flat and the pumpkin surface is curved, I end up with a bit of a gap. But it's easy enough to fill it with some excess epoxy and smooth it out. With the eye firmly in place, I can give this little guy some eyelids. And just like before, I smooth everything out and blend the transitions using a silicone shaper. With the tentacles textured and the eye attached, the body of this pumpkin is complete. But what's a king without a crown?
I'll be channeling my inner studs in studio and making the crown out of essentially garbage. I start with the crown's base, which is one of those 25 cent vending machine capsules. Working on a sheet of parchment paper to prevent sticking to my workbench, I start wrapping it in clay. Using a piece of cardboard, I knock down all the ridges until everything is smooth. Once the epoxy clay was cured, I gave it a quick sanding. Using a zip tie with its head cut off, I wrap it around the base to form the ridges of the crown. Using some Mardi Gras beads and some support wire, I'm creating the round pokey bits that surround the crown. Using a bit of super glue, I attach the wires to the beads. As you can see, the beads aren't perfectly round. To fix this, I chuck them up in my drill and sand them smooth using 220 grit sandpaper. After a quick sanding, they're looking so much better. And with these parts done, I can drill the holes for them in the crown's base. I drill eight holes along the side and one on top for a spike. Once all the side holes were drilled, I drilled one last hole on top and then glued in all the pieces. With the crown complete, I can declare this pumpkin king. Or maybe not. It turns out the stem is too large. To fix this, I break out the hot knife once again and give our little man a stemectomy. With the stem gone, there was nothing keeping the crown in place, so I whipped up a quick prosthetic that will act as a locating pin. I covered the raw clay in plastic wrap so it wouldn't stick to the crown and then pressed it into place. I removed the crown in plastic wrap and let the clay fully cure. Our little pumpkin guy is ready for paint, but first I hit him with a coat of Optimus Primer. With our pumpkin primed, it's time to start painting. The body gets a coat of orange and I make sure to get the inside edges of the mouth as well. Using a teeny tiny little brush, I carefully paint around each tentacle. Speaking of tentacles, they get a coat of ghostly green. Moving on to the eye, it gets a base coat of white before pressing on the dark green pupil with the back of a paintbrush for a perfect circle. With the pumpkin painted, it's time to move on to His Majesty's Crown, which gets a base coat of gold with royal red accents. Masking around the eye with tape would be super tedious, so a tip I picked up from Zeta Bu Creations is to use Silly Putty. If we're supposed to believe that this is an ancient pumpkin, he's gotta look the part. To show that he's been around the graveyard for a while, I need to dirty him up. And to do that, I'll weather him using a dark brown wash. I start by slathering him with dark brown paint and then wiping away the excess. The paint will seep into all the crevices and really highlight all the texture. I repeated the same exact process on the crown, and when all the paint was dry, I could remove the Silly Putty eye mask. The last thing to do is to shine up the eye. And for that, I'm using Total Boat's UV Resin. This stuff is really cool, because instead of taking hours to harden, it cures in only minutes when exposed to UV light. And once the resin was hardened, this project is done. So I absolutely love the way this little guy turned out, but if I'm being honest, he was kind of a nightmare to make. Everything that could go wrong did, so if you'd like to hear the full story behind that, you can check out the after show on my Patreon. Speaking of, I'd like to give a massive thank you to my first ever Patreon supporter, Jacob Freeland. Your support means the absolute world to me and I can't thank you enough. With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would like, comment, share, and subscribe. 
Also, check out some of my other videos. That'll do it for this one, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!